It's Wild Card Wednesday with Crafting Cousins. What are we up to today? Stick around and we'll find out. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of the wood rounds from Dollar Tree Plus. This is in the section where things are $5 and it's a 10 inch round. This wording that I designed and printed from the computer, I will put a link to it in the description box if you would like to have a copy. Some carbon paper, some paint markers from Amazon, some chalk paint and some multi-surface paint in red, white, and blue, various ribbons from my stash, I think these all came from Hobby Lobby, berry trim from Hobby Lobby, a zip tie, a D-ring hanger, and some paint brushes. The first thing I'm going to do is mark my wood round. I mark it at the 4 inch mark and at the 3 inch mark and then I draw lines across of it and this is going to help me split it up. Now I'm going to take that cobalt hue paint from Folk Art and I'm going to paint the top section of this. Now this one is a little bit bigger than the other two sections because I'm going to be putting a bow at the top and I knew that would balance it out. I chose not to use tape to take this off. I'm just using my brush and trying to carefully go along that edge and keep it as straight as possible. But you could use tape to tape it off if you feel better doing that. Now this paint is from Folk Art. It's the multi-surface paint and it's really good y'all. It only took one coat. Now for the middle of this, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I will paint the middle. And then for the bottom, I'm going to use the Waverly chalk paint in the color Crimson and paint that as well. I did make sure that I painted down the sides and on the edges, but I tried to keep it off of the back. I didn't succeed. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to put my patterns onto my project. I did cut them apart to make it easier. And then I centered up my stars in the blue and I used some carbon paper underneath it and I trace over it. This transfers my stars to my project. Several people ask me where I get my carbon paper. I got mine from Office Depot, but you can also get it from Amazon. Now, once I got my stars on there, I decided to use my white gel pen and outline them because they're a little hard to see. They're easier than they are on camera, but it is still a little bit of a strain and I thought that it would help me if I went ahead and took this pen and outlined them before I started painting. I started off painting these with those paint pens, but I didn't like them. They looked kind of streaky and I just wasn't really feeling it. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint and a small paintbrush and I filled these in with my paint. Now this ended up taking longer than I intended for it to take because I'm not real sure when it comes to painting and that always takes me a little bit longer to make sure I stay in the lines. But I was happy with how it turned out. Now that our stars are dry, we're going to put on our God Bless, and so we do the same thing. I take my carbon paper and put under my words and trace over them, and then we're going to do the same thing for the America. Now, I'm using washi tape to hold this down so it doesn't pull up my um, paint, but you can use any tape you want to. I just trace over my letters, and this trace transfers them to my project. Now for the God Bless, I am going to use one of these paint markers and it worked great for this. I guess it's just like filling in those pieces that it didn't work so well for because on the lettering, it looks really good. For the America, I took my white gel pen and I started outlining it and then I decided to just fill it in because these letters are kind of small and the tip on those paint pens is kind of thick and I was afraid that it would make a huge mess if I tried to use it and my white gel markers work perfect for these. I got these from Arteza and I love these markers. Now that everything is dry, I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper, and this is just some you get from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go over this whole thing and just kind of give it that old vintage look and just keep playing with it until I get it where it looks old and shabby. 
Does this remind y'all of the old Pepsi signs that they used to make that looked like caps? I swear this reminds me so much of those Pepsi signs, but I really do love it. Now on the back of this, I did find that I had gotten some of the paint on there. I told y'all I wasn't successful. I tried sanding it and most of it came off, but I'm one of those people who loves a finished back. So I just grabbed one of my furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree and I just stained the back of it and it covered up the little bit of paint that was left on the back. And now this has a finished look to it. While we're back there, we're gonna go ahead and put our hanger on. I just center it up at the top, and then I use my pokey tool from the Dollar Tree to give me a starting hole, and then I just use my little screwdriver and put the screw in. Now let's make a bow. This is going to be a shabby bow or a messy bow, whatever you wanna call it. So I cut my ribbons down to six inches, and I started with the biggest one on the bottom and then I just worked my way up. I just used different kinds in different colors and different patterns, anything that I thought went with my theme. I'm also using some of this crochet lace. I love this stuff and I think the lace lends to the shabby sheet part of this. I'm also gonna put some of my Rick Rack on the very top and I just used two little strips of each color for that. I also decided to add in two pieces of this little berry trim that I got from Hobby Lobby. Okay, so now we're going to start putting this together. I like to dovetail my ends as I go, that way I'm not trying to do them at the end. And then you just start building it in a crisscross manner. I use both of the ribbons, I turn one one way and one the other way and just keep stacking them all the way up. For my lace, I did not dovetail it. I just kind of trimmed it off and then I went back to dovetailing my ribbons and just keep going until you get it all stacked up, crisscross, crisscross. Now we're gonna put on our rick rack and trim that up. And then I laid that um, berry trim right on the top. Now I'm gonna take that zip tie and tighten it up and then start fluffing up my bow. I'm gonna take a piece of lace and tie around the center just to kind of cover up that um, zip tie. And I took one of those jewel scatters and glued it right into the center. Now here's where I noticed that this was not going to lay flat with that zip tie. So I cut it off and my lace held it just fine. So you really don't even have to use a zip tie on this. We're gonna fluff it up and then we are going to glue it right to the center of our sign. And there's our finished piece. I am so in love with this one. Now, I will say that I did not see that glob of glue on it until I started putting this video together, but I promise you I went back and took care of that. This is a beautiful addition to my summer decor. Today we are excited to be teaming up with our friend Brandy from Making It My Own for a shabby chic collaboration. If you haven't heard of Brandy, we hope that you will check her out. She's so sweet and super talented, we just know that you're going to love the variety of gorgeous DIYs and thrift flips she has on her channel. Brandy's still pretty new to the YouTube world, so we hope that you will go over, see what she's created, and if you like what you see, show her some love and subscribe. We will have a link to her video in the description box below. Make sure you tell her we sent you over. If you are new and coming over from Brandy's channel, welcome! We are so happy to have you join us. We release three videos each week. We're sure you can find something you will like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old bottle that one of my friends gave me. They know that I like to craft, so they're always on the lookout for odd bottles, and I love that they collect these for me. This printable that I designed and printed on the computer, I will put a link to it down in the description box. Some Waverly chalk paint in white, Mod Podge, a bandana from the Dollar Tree, some lace, this jewel scatter that I got from Hobby Lobby when it was on sale for 50% off, and some tools from my work caddy. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is take my bottle and give it two good coats of paint with my Waverly chalk paint. Now I do paint this all over even on the bottom and I painted the cap. I did not remove the cap to paint the lip though because I'm not going to be taking it off so I figured it was okay to just leave it like it was. Now this did take two good coats of paint so that it wouldn't look streaky and my husband asked me why <laughs> I put that much paint on it if I'm just going to be distressing it because I do distress this bottle and I told him that there's a difference between streaky paint and distressed paint. I want distressed paint. Now I'm going to take that printable and I decided to use the piece that was on the bottom because I'm going to do the lettering myself so I didn't use the one that was already connected together. I'm going to cut this out. I'm actually fussy cutting it with my detail scissors, but you don't have to get in there as much as I did because the white actually blends into the bottle and you really don't even see it. Once I get that completely cut out, I'm going to take some of my Mod Podge and I'm just putting it on the back of my flowers and then applying it to my bottle because I don't want the Mod Podge all over the bottle yet because I'm going to be putting my wording on there. Now I'm going to take my wording and I flip it over and I use a pencil and scribble on the back of it just like we did when we were kids. And then I put it on my bottle and I trace over the letters and this transfers the image onto my project. Now I'm just going to use one of my graphic markers that I get from Hobby Lobby and fill it in. Now if you don't have these graphic illustration markers, you can use the Sharpies or even the Jot markers from the Dollar Tree. Now that I have my wording on there, I'm going to use a little bit of Mod Podge to seal in the top of my flower. Now I'm going to take some of that sandpaper that you get from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go all over this bottle and give it a good distressing. This had so much beautiful detail and I loved how it looked when I did this distressing on it. It makes it pop out. I went over that lid as well and distressed it and I even distressed the bottom of this. Y'all, I am loving this piece. Now I'm going to make kind of like a bow for the top. I take some of my lace and I figure out how long I want it to be and cut two pieces. And then I took this bandana from the Dollar Tree and I make a little slit in it and then I ripped off the strips. I did this four times and got four of those strips. You can use any fabric. I just really like this bandana. Now that I have my strips, I decided that my lace was just a little bit too wide to tie. So I took my little scissors and I cut it right down the middle. Now we're going to take that and just tie it around the neck of the bottle and I tied a double knot and then I'm going to use one of those jewel scatters and glue it right into the center. And there's our finished project. I love how this one turned out. La Liberate, I guess that's how you say it, is actually French for freedom and I thought it was perfect in this project since it is a shabby chic project. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this faux wood sign that I found at the thrift store. But if you don't have one of these, you could use an old piece of wood or even a Dollar Tree sign that you cut down. Three of these wooden stars. I'm not sure where I got these, but you can get some just like them at the Dollar Tree. Some lace and rick rack trim that I got from Hobby Lobby. Several pieces of scrap fabric. This is, was from my stash, but if you don't have a stash, you can get old clothes at the thrift store and rip them up, 
or I like to get fabric from Hobby Lobby and Joann's when it's on sale. Just get a quarter yard of several different kinds and it'll build up your stash. Some twine, some lace, some multi-surface paint in cobalt hue, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and a pair of scissors. So the first thing I wanted to do was paint my sign. Now I don't want it to be solid. I just wanted it to have that blue look to it. So I took some of my folk art paint in cobalt hue and a chippy brush and I started going over this. Again, I didn't want it to be solid. I just wanted to give it the hint of blue. So I did it almost like a dry brush and I just did it really heavily. Now I'm going to take three of those wooden stars and use my Waverly white chalk paint and give all three a good coat of paint. I am going to be covering these with that lace and I thought I was going to do it without painting them, but I really didn't like how it looked on that raw wood. So I decided to give these a coat of paint and then I set them aside and let them dry. Now this part I had actually already done and then I figured out that my camera got full and quit recording so I'm just going to show you real quickly what I did. I took some of my fabric and I tore it into strips and the best way to do this is just to make a clip on one end of your fabric and then rip it and you get these strips of fabric. It's shabby chic and I really love it and I did it on three of the projects in this video. So now I have all of my fabric. I did it in whites and reds. And then for this lace, the way I get those strips is I just take it and fold it up several times and then cut it into strips. And that gives me the strips of lace. Now that we have all of our strips, we're gonna take our board and flip it over and reapply these to the board. You just want to lay it out to get an idea of how you want these to go. And you don't have to be too specific with it, but remember that whatever you put here on the first layer is going to be what shows in the front the most. So I picked out the ones I liked and then I put down a stream of glue and I attached those to the back of the sign. Now I'm going to go back and fill in with my other pieces. I just kind of figure out what I want where and you know just kind of fill it in until you like how it looks and it has kind of a solid look from the back that way you know it's going to look full from the front now i didn't put too much of this on because i didn't want it to get too thick because this is going to be against your wall and i didn't want it to pop my sign out now that we have everything attached, I flipped it over and straightened it out, and then I trimmed off the ends so that this was all about the same length. I'm sorry I got out of the camera range. I thought I was still in it, but all I did was cut it off. Now we're going to take those three stars and apply a coat of Mod Podge to it and then just put your lace right on top of it. Now I did flip this over and it's okay because this is a silicone mat and all of that paint that you see on there and this Mod Podge will wash right up. This is a great mat for cleanup. Once I got all of these attached and they had dried, then I cut them apart. And then I take my detail scissors and go in and just trim them right up next to that star. Now I want these to look a little shabby so it doesn't matter you know if you've got a little bit hanging off the edges. I really loved how this looked. I know it's a little hard to see the lace on camera but in person it is so pretty and so shabby chic. Now we are going to line our stars up on our board and these just fit. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna use some hot glue and glue them right down. To make a hanger for this, I'm just going to take a piece of twine and I tie a knot on each end. Then I'm cutting off two more little pieces of that fabric that I had used. I put hot glue down and stick my twine in it and then I put hot glue on top of it and put the fabric over it. And there's our finished project. I really love how this one turned out. Shabby Chic is close to my heart. I love the romantic feel of it and I love these patriotic pieces. I think they're going to be the perfect addition to my summer decor.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this small tobacco basket that I got at Target for $3. Now, if you can't find these tobacco baskets, I will put a link down in the description box for a video where we made one using the placemats from the Dollar Tree. Some lace and a part of an old dress that I got from the thrift store. Various scraps of fabric from my stash some jewel scatter from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, some ribbon and rick rack from Hobby Lobby, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and my scissors. So the first thing we're going to do is tear our fabric into strips. Now I love how this looks. You are going to end up with a lot of strings. You might as well face it because this is cotton fabric, but this is such a soft and shabby way to make a bow. So I just pulled some red, some blue, some white fabric from my stash. I used all different patterns and shades and I just make a clip in one end of my fabric and then I rip it and it gives me these strips. Now some of them will curl into themselves so I did have to iron those out. For my lace, I actually roll it up and then I cut strips of it and that's how I get my lace pieces. Now we're going to take our rick rack and I'm going to cut two pieces of each color and I am using red, white, and blue in my rick rack as well. Now let's start our bow. I laid out a ribbon that's going to be what we tied up with and then I take my fabric strips and I start making the bow and I do that just by looping it over itself as you see me do here. I took my ruler and made sure that the loops on both sides were about the same size and then once you get that first one down the rest of them are easy. You just take your pieces of fabric, alternate your colors, alternate your um, patterns and just loop them on top of themselves right on up until you get as many in there as you want. Now there really is no set number for this. It's just how um, full you want your bow to be. Again, I used about six pieces of each color. So I've got six of the red, six of the blue family, and six of the white family. And the white family did include my laces. And I just keep going right on up until I get them all folded up on there. I saved my rick rack for the very top because I wanted that to show at the at the front of the bow. Once you get that all on there, then you're going to take that piece of ribbon and pull it around to the back of this and tie it into a double knot really tight and that gives you your bow. Now just like any other bow, this is going to need a lot of fluffing. So you just kind of have to play with it and fluff it around, pull those tails to the end and trim them off. Now I'm going to take one of those jewel pieces and I'm going to glue it right into the middle of my bow. Now I put my bow in my basket and I decided that my tails just were not long enough. I trimmed them off a little bit too much I think. So I grabbed my fabric and I started making two more strips of each color. I won't make you watch me do this again. I used the exact same technique that I used before. Once I got all of my strips, I gather them up by the middle and then I put them on the back of my bow and use that same ribbon and double knot it to tie it to my bow. Now, once I got to looking at it, I did not like having some of my tails being short and some of them being long. And that was my own fault because I cut my tails too short in the beginning. I should have put it in my basket before I cut them, but I didn't. So this is how I'm fixing it. So I'm cutting off all of the short tails that were on the original bow. And it's okay that there's little pieces because you won't really see that. Once I get everything trimmed up, I attach my bow to my tobacco basket. And the way I'm doing that is just by using that same ribbon that I tied it together with. I flip over that basket and tie it into a double knot at the back. That way I can redecorate this basket when I want to. And I do use a little drop of glue to hold it and trim those tails. Now we're going to flip it over and trim off our tails on our bow once again. And that's it. 
and there's our finished project. Y'all, this one really is super simple. I made it more complicated than it had to be because I trimmed my tails off too short, but I was able to show you how you can make tails for this if you didn't make them when you made your bow. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!